So JD's victory over AH not only looks secure on appeal, but get this, he may just win again. That's right. All the ground that was given to AH, she may give up on appeal. This would be her fault, by the way. You and I, we are going to talk about that today. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun times, huh? This is fun times indeed. All right, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. You and I, we are finally getting to see that appeals process as far as JD versus AH is concerned. And like I said, JD, he may walk away with yet another win. When he does this, this may be a complete victory too. And it shows you just how desperate AEH is. Of course, she has to appeal in this process if she does it. Her insurers, they're going to end up suing her. You have all these people that are speaking out about what happened during the trial. I mean, it's a mess for her. So, of course, she has to do this. But when she did it, JD, he got a second chance here. And he's saying, you know, about that counterclaim, yeah, I don't think that should stand. The reason that he's saying that, really, there are three reasons he puts up here and he breaks them down. Number one, he's saying that the trial court it erred by denying JD's motion for summary judgment as to AH's counterclaim and JD's motion to strike evidence as to AH's counterclaim. He's saying essentially there should have been a decision on this before we ever went to trial. It should have never been presented at all. The jury, they should have never been able to talk about this. And the reason for it, well, like I said, they break it down with a few reasons. Number one, Adam Waldman is an independent contractor. They're saying, you know, Adam Waldman, as far as this goes, he was speaking on his own behalf. He's entitled to have his own opinions. He is not an employee agent. You know, he's not somebody's PR or their mouthpiece. He's his own person out here doing his own independent investigations. Therefore, JD is not liable for Adam Waldman's allegedly tortious conduct as a matter of law. That's not throwing Adam Waldman under the bus either. It's just saying, as far as his statements are concerned, they are his own statements. B here, the statements that would be known as the counterclaim statements by non-party. They note that too, because again, you know, he's not a party in this. You have JD, you have AH as parties. He's a non-party that's being basically discussed as a mouthpiece for JD. Well, he's by non-party Adam Waldman that are subject of AH's counterclaim. They are not actionable statements sufficient to support a claim for defamation. So when you look at that, you can't even claim defamation out that at all. They are not sufficient for it. And number C, I thought this was an interesting thing too, because when you really, you think about what it means. AH failed to present any clear and convincing evidence that Adam Waldman made the counterclaim statements with actual malice. Now, that's a big point in everything that came up in the trial, the idea of actual malice. When you get to the actual malice test, to, quote, to show actual malice, the plaintiff must demonstrate that the defendant or the employee agent in this case either knew that his statement was false or subjectively entertained serious doubt his statement was truthful. So, he either had to know he was lying or he had to think, well, maybe this, it couldn't be true. Adam Waldman has made it very clear again and again that he supports JD, not because he's a client, but because he believes what he noted. So, as far as as actual malice is concerned, yeah, it doesn't seem to meet that threshold. Not at all. That's fascinating, right? He's not his mouthpiece. Uh, this shouldn't be defamation. And beyond that, where's the actual malice in any of those statements? Now, as far as number two here is concerned,
concerned, the trial court, it erred in refusing J.D.'s proposed jury instructions. These are about whether Adam Waldman was acting as an independent contractor when he made the counterclaim. So, you had a bunch of jury instructions that were presented. You had some that were denied in that. They're saying, as far as jury instructions are concerned, there was a specific one, or actually specific three there, that told the jury about whether or not he was acting as an independent contractor. We think because those weren't in there, the jury, they would have made this specific decision. We would like that looked at as well. And then number three here, the trial court, it erred in excluding, and I think this is a big one here from evidence, the full unredacted versions of J.D.'s exhibits, they give the exhibit numbers, which are copies of the news articles in which the counterclaim statements appeared, instead admitting only redacted versions that show the counterclaim statements out of context. I thought that this argument was a fascinating one. Why? Because you're not just arguing content or the statements made by Adam Waldman. You're also arguing context, you know, the way that they actually appear. Now, what's interesting about that, number one, you have A.H. being able to present context with the content as far as her statements were concerned. So when J.D. was saying this statement, that statement, the other statement, these caused me damage. She got to show the entirety of the article off. She got to argue all of that. Well, as far as the counterclaim statement is concerned, J.D., he wasn't allowed to argue it the exact same way. If he was able to argue that, you would have noticed a few things. First of all, you would have noticed these statements, they weren't made in a vacuum. They were made with a lot of other stuff as well. That includes statements from AH's attorneys. That's right. They were out there the entire time. They had been making statements again and again. This was a war for hearts and minds, not just a war in the courtroom. And that's really why they have a problem with Adam Waldman. I mean, when you get down to it, he's the one that not only put together the courtroom win, because this was his case, these were his witnesses, so he put all of that together, but he also was the person that managed to win the court of public opinion. They don't like him for that. They blame him for that. And what's fascinating about it is that A.H. is still blaming Adam Waldman. She's still blaming J.D. She goes after them again and again. And because of that, like I said, J.D., he may walk away with another win. And this, it would be a complete victory at that. When you look at this, though, I mean, it's pretty to the point. Why? Because again, A.H.'s win, it was a minor one at that. I mean, when you compare it to what A.H. actually submitted for this, oh, it was a very lengthy document. Essentially, she wants to retry the entirety of the case, the before the case plus the case itself. J.D.'s, it's much, much more simple to look at. Ah, This is going to be fascinating to watch. I think, again, he is good to go. There may be a lot more to that added on. All of that would be A.H.'s fault. But anyway, let me know what you think about this. And as always, appreciate the heck out of you. You make this work. Thank you. Can't say that enough. Want to help out the channel, by the way? Check out links in the description. We could always use your help. But you being here, that is the biggest help of all. Thank you. Appreciate you. End it here. See you soon.